Hey everybody, what's up? It's Patrick from Magnetic Nerd, and today I'm going to show you how to make this. It's the Nautilus from 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Some of you may be asking, Nautilus, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea? Jules Verne put out a book. It is a really cool book. I actually recommend you read this book. And then Disney actually made a movie about it based on that book in the 50s, and this model is a representation of the sub you saw in that movie. Everyone keeping score at home, here's a list of the materials I used in this project. Per my usual, um, I am not very good at 3D modeling. It is a skill I would really like to learn, but I am procrastinating, so I go to other places to find my STLs to 3D print. This one, Thingiverse. Found a file I liked, sliced it up, and off to the Prusa. The printer did its thing, I had my large pieces of plastic. This was a really easy model to put together. It printed in four large sections. There's some small little details as well. The glue I used to put this project together, well, there were a couple of them. For the larger sections, I used five minute epoxy. For the smaller details, I used plastic weld. I used my good old friend Tamaya Putty to fill in the larger seam lines. A small little snag I hit during the printing process was the ventral fin. There was a smaller piece that did not print well, so I ended up having to manufacture my own piece as instead of printing the entire section again, which it was the largest section of the sub, so I was not willing to wait 12 hours. I just took a piece of styrene, sized it up, sanded it, glued it in place. Now you don't even know I messed up. I just told you, but just pretend I didn't say that. Another little bit of customization that I did with this is the screw you see along the ventral fin as well. This model did not include that anywhere in the design. I wanted it there, it was a little more screen accurate having the screw there, so I used a screw. I cut it off, I used the threaded part of that screw. Sized it up, glued it into place. Now it's a more movie accurate representation of the Nautilus. Instead of sanding away all those fine little details that were on this model, I used a product called XTC 3D. It is a resin from Smooth-On that is made specifically for 3D prints. It does not heat up like a normal resin, so it won't melt the plastic of your model. That filled in those layer lines, so I didn't have to sand and prime away all of the Prusa's hard work. And anytime I don't have to go crazy sanding and priming my 3D prints, it's a tremendous bonus. So, thank you Smooth-On. On to priming, and for priming, I use filler primer. In the previous segment, I said I didn't have to sand this. Well, there was a little bit of sanding involved. The resin did smooth everything out tremendously, but there was a couple little imperfections here and there that I did have to do a light sanding job just to make sure it was smooth. Another added customization, a little twist that I decided to put on this particular model was the windows. There were files to 3D print 
the different little windows you see on this, but I wanted to cast them in resin as opposed to using the 3D parts. The layer lines don't show, the infill doesn't show, it's a clear window replica because a little feature about this particular model, there's room in there for electronics. So I want to put lights in this sucker. And now with all of that done, it is on to my favorite part of making a model. Painting and weathering. I just love to take the piece that you've constructed and turn it into something that just replicates the real world item or that item from a, from a book or a movie. So without further ado, let's get on to the weathering and painting part of the Nautilus. For this model, I used a variety of acrylic paints to give it depth. So, montage time! For the weathering, I have some really cool products from Mig Jimenez. It's called Oil Brusher. And then there's actually some rust pigments that you see a lot for tanks and dioramas. I decided to use that on this model. All those fun effects that you get from a submarine that's been bathing in salt water for years. Last, but certainly not least, the final bit of detail was the propeller.
If you know me and you've been following this channel for a long time, you know that I love to build models. I've said it several times. So doing this, it was, it was my jam. It was just me building a model. This wasn't for any specific project. This wasn't for any specific cosplay. It was just me building a model I wanted to build. And that's what was fun about it. But I don't really know if I'm totally done with this project yet. I think this might pop up in a later video. You guys are gonna have to stay tuned to find out what exactly that project is gonna be. Thank you, and I'll see you guys next time.